What's up you guys, welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, I'm gonna give you guys an update. I know a lot of you have been checking in with me and asking me if everything's okay and if I'm doing good and the family's doing good. So I thought I would just sit down and talk to you guys because so much has changed. So much has changed since the last video that I made talking about this a month ago. Before we get into that, I'm officially moved into my new home. It's off of a main road and I haven't soundproofed this room yet and it also might be a little bit echoey, but you gotta bear with me so there might be like some real life noise because I'm a person with a real life happening around her, so bear with me. Side note, that's why you guys are called the Ride or Die crew, because I know y'all don't care about the car noise in the background or anything else that I complain about when it comes to like my system and I love y'all. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a person in long-term recovery who has been to prison that sucked. On this channel, I talk about prison, addiction, mental health, my crazy life, which is what today's video is. But if you want to follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, that's $2. It's only ever going to be $2. All of that is linked down below, as well as my vlog channel and my Facebook page. I'm going to have new merch coming out soon as soon as I can sit down and design it. But I have really good ideas and I can't wait. All right, let's kick this thing off. Did y'all see that we are 30K away? Is that right? Hold on. We're 30K away from a million on this channel. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what y'all are doing. Um, I will tell you that my six year old is disappointed that I don't have the diamond. And I said, baby, that's 10 million. Like I'm not Mr. Beast. It's not gonna happen for like, prison, right? Not me, other prison people maybe. Uh, it's the wrong niche for that, so if you see me making slime videos, it's because that six-year-old is a savage and she wants that diamond. Not for me to have it. No, no, she wants it, so she has told me if and when I won't earn it, uh, it's hers. So she's called Dibs. Okay, get a beverage, get comfortable. Oh, Lord. 2022 has been such a crazy year for so many people. Like, it feels like 2022 said to 2020, hold my beer. You know what I mean? It's just been crazy. And the whole year has just felt very, for me, very stressed and uneasy and chaotic. And I'm really hoping for peace and a new start in 2023 because whoo, 2022 can get I'm done with it. So I have officially moved into my home. The girls and I are living here full time. It has been like a week and a half and we are just busy little worker bees trying to set everything up and build some things that I ordered for them and get Christmas set up, which is 15 days away. I don't, I don't have one present, not one present because I plan to shop in like, you know, a deadline induced panic um, like I do every year. So it's gonna be fine, <laughs> don't even worry about it. But we are, we're all moved in. I'm gonna fix this, Just I just threw it up so I could film a video. A couple of days ago, I collabed with Hiram, skincare by Hiram, the king, the literal skincare king, and he is just the sweetest. And we had an amazing conversation for his podcast and it comes out in a, about a week. And I can't wait to share that with you guys. So a lot of things are going on, a lot of things are happening that are positive, um, but my personal life is, it's a lot. I'm really struggling with my mental health. I'm really struggling with depression. I'm trying to do everything that I can to take care of myself and my body so that I can work to pull myself out of depression. And I think people get sadness and depression confused because someone that has chronic depression, their brain chemistry is a little bit different, right? It's different than sadness. Sadness looks like something happened that made you sad. Depression looks like waking up and having nothing wrong and being unable to get out of bed having to force yourself to do basic things, basic hygiene, basic self-care, basic normal everyday things that you have to do for being a human. Which by the way, why is the human body so dang needy? It always needs something, you know? Food, water, sunlight, exercise, soap. It just always needs stuff, you know what I mean? It's really ridiculous. But I could do all of those things and still be depressed. I could do all of those things and I'm like working myself to death trying to pull myself out of it, use my medicine, which is cannabis, and I could still be depressed. And I think that's what's really hard for people to understand because they're like, oh, just take a hot bath, light a candle, go for a run, eat some avocados, go for, you know, work out, um, go for a walk, touch some grass, get some sunlight. Okay, so now I've done all of that and I'm still depressed, what do I do? And it was really hard to do that. Like I physically had to force myself to do it. So what I have learned to do when I'm that depressed is just to kind of sit there for a minute, just just experience that depression and, and feel those things and then process and move on instead of immediately being like, Ugh, 
so depressed, let me do all these things because it just wears me out. I feel like someone needed to hear that today, that's why I, I said all of that. In terms of my relationship status and what we're doing as a family and what this looks like for the kids and what am I, I gonna do with this home or that home or whatever, I wanna start with a question that I see every day and then I'll get into like the other stuff. People are asking me all the time, why didn't you just get an apartment? Because now you own this house. My phone rang and I had like a short conversation and now I completely forgot what I was saying. Cool, cool, cool. Um, but a lot of people were asking me why I didn't just rent a place, why did I buy a place? Well, the options for a renter that is a felon with two large dogs over 50 pounds, although Bowie does look small, she weighs 50 pounds, uh, that is really difficult to find a place that was big enough to work in and live in, big enough for the dogs and the kids, someone that would allow a felon and someone that would allow two big ass dogs, which by the way, my kids are more destructive than dogs could ever be, but it's probably illegal to be like, you can't live here if you have kids. You know what I mean? That is the reason for that, is that my options were kind of limited. And my options were limited even when it came to buying a house. I had like four options in our area. Okay, so like now for the hard stuff. Uh, I know you guys really wanna know what my relationship status is and how he's doing and if he's around or, you know, interacting with us and if we're sticking to a schedule and if he's gonna be around for the holidays. And I have to keep it vague because there's a lot of there's a lot of layers to it uh, safety being one of them maybe legal reasons so i can't really go into the specifics of it nor do i feel comfortable in doing so but i can and will talk about how i am doing and how i am affected and what i have been going through as a direct result of the situation i feel as though i have pushed myself so far past my breaking point that I have nothing left to give. Like I have been pouring from an empty cup for so long. I mean, the cup has dust in it and I'm still trying to pour from it. So I just need to really, really, really mean what I say when I say I need to focus on myself because from my perspective, this situation is not getting better and everything shifted uh, a month ago or so. And as I've said in almost every video about talking about this, I am frustrated, I am upset, I am mad, I am hurting. But for so long, I constantly tried to put my feelings on the back burner because everything that he's going through is like the fire that we have to put out. And then I'm like the rubble, you know, we are, the kids and I are like collateral damage, right? So he's the fire, we are the rubble and the ash. I feel like that sounded really harsh, but it's genuinely how I feel. I want to add in here that a couple of different situations have happened that have been so far outside of the realm of okay, and it's going to take me a lot of time to heal from the things that have happened recently that I'm not comfortable talking about yet. I did not create the situation. I am just responding to it. And that has been really hard because I blame myself for everything and I'm constantly working through that in my head. Well, maybe if I just did this differently or that differently or said this differently, responded differently, it would have been better. I can only control myself and how I respond to things. I can't control what someone else is doing and how they're reacting or responding or whatever they're struggling with. I can't control it, I can't stop it. I have to make sure that I'm not triggered into becoming a unhealed version of me because I worked so hard to heal all of the parts of me that were really bad and broken and, and all I can do is heal me and take care of me. And in doing so, I hope that that energy is contagious and others around me can heal and be better and happier and peaceful and all of that, all of that good stuff. As much as I want to tell you guys that everything is great and everything is going a lot better, I've had to continue to make really hard decisions and I don't think that we are going to spend Christmas together just from the way that it is looking right now and that's okay. There is a yippy dog outside. Like, I think it's a Pomeranian or a Chihuahua or something. God, small dogs scare me. I'm sorry, this is taking a turn. I would love to tell you that we're gonna spend Christmas together and it's gonna be so fun and we're so excited and everything's going really great, but I have had to continue to make really hard decisions based on the behavior that I am currently seeing. There is so much that I want to share and I will eventually because the truth never dies. Please know that I would never keep a man from his kids that is safe that is sober, that is loving, that is emotionally stable and mentally healthy. I would never keep 
a healthy, safe, sober individual away from the kids. I wouldn't, I just wouldn't. I've tried to work it from every single angle humanly possible to keep him as involved in our lives as, as we can, to continue to you know, try to be there for him. And it is honestly impossible right now, just right now. I already feel like I'm saying too much even though I've barely said really anything. I know that the boundaries that I have set are not unreasonable. I also know I'm not perfect at all by any stretch of the imagination whatsoever point blank period I'm, I'm not i am a human being with her own traumas and unhealed stuff and triggers to work through the version that i've seen currently is a complete stranger and i think that has what has been so hard for me is that i'm still trying to treat him like the old him but he's got to find his way back to the old him and i have every confidence in the world that he's going to do that hopefully he's doing that currently i just have to make the best decisions i possibly can because my kids well-being and safety and mental health is my top priority and i have their best interest at heart moving on to the, the kids they are so smart and they understand a lot more than i ever thought they would at this age but i'm really honest with them we're honest about mental health and addiction and our past and i think it's kind of comical when people comment well what are you going to do when your kids see these videos what are you going to say to them the truth I'm gonna tell them the truth, just like they know the truth now. Right now they know that daddy loves them so much and he just has to get better. He's sick right now, but he's not gonna be sick forever. And when he gets better, we'll throw a big ass party for him. They are so understanding and so kind and so sweet. I just, I'm so lucky to have them. They're incredible kids. So that's where we're at. And I just wanna say for anyone going through a similar situation, maybe it's just a divorce, maybe it is substance use your partner is using or they're struggling with their mental health or things have become toxic. Maybe drugs aren't even involved. Maybe alcohol is not involved. Maybe it's not a divorce or maybe you're thinking about leaving a toxic situation or a relationship you're unhappy in. Let me tell you right now, whatever the situation is, if you have kids, two peaceful houses, are better than one toxic one. I don't subscribe to the patriarchy, okay? So I don't believe in any of that crap where we are telling women all the time to stay together for the kids and work it out and, you know, stop nagging him, all, whatever, okay? No, no, if you're unhappy and you are constantly asking someone for the literal bare minimum and they act as if it's too much, or if you're telling someone how they have hurt you and they twist it around and make it your fault, or if they're just not showing effort or love into the relationship and you feel alone with someone, these are all signs that uh, you should bounce, mama. You should bounce because two peaceful houses are better than one toxic one. Sometimes I say things like that because I feel like someone needs to hear it and it might not mean what exactly I'm going through, but I just want you to know that it's okay. It is okay to start over and leave. What would you rather have? A relationship for 50 years where you're miserable or starting over and living the last 20, 30 years of your life with peace and happiness and doing what's best for you. And I think a lot of the time as women, we are taught to tend to everyone and care for everyone and, and care for yourself last. Nope, it's like on an airplane. What do they tell you? Put your mask on first if we go down and then put someone else's mask on, the air mask. You know, you can't take care of other people unless you're okay. So stop putting everyone else before you. Put yourself first because once you do, you're going to realize that you can be such a better version of yourself. And sometimes we have to let go of something that is okay to find something that is great. That could be a million different things, a job, a town, relationship, friendship. And I promise you right now, if you're afraid to do something, if you are really afraid, and, but you've been thinking about this and like really meditating on this one thing that you wanna do, maybe it's leave your hometown. Everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. Life is too fucking short to be miserable. Life is too fucking short to not put yourself first and do exactly what you want to do and to just be happy and be fulfilled. Hopefully that was like my dear Abby, you know, like the advice, the dear Abby column. That was my dear Abby column moment of the video. Um, but I'm okay. We're okay. Everything's okay. And I know that in 2023, things are going to be so much better, just positive and peaceful. And I am just manifesting that. I'm also probably going to enter my villain era. Okay. So fuck around and find out. That's what 2023 has either peace, peace and happiness. Fuck around and find out. Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs>
If you're struggling in active addiction, I'm a partner with Groups Recover Together. They are both online and in-person treatment program. They're 420 friendly. I absolutely adore them. And they're just an incredible team of people. And whatever it is that you need to rebuild your life, they are there for you. They, you know, whether it's helping you with a driver's license, maybe it's clothes, they will find resources in that area if they're in that area. Or even if they're not, they'll help you find a place that is, you know, not groups, but a place that is close to you. They're just incredible at helping you find what you need, get to what you need, even if it's not them. I absolutely adore them. So I always leave my landing page with them in the description box of every single video. I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay in recovery, whatever that looks like to you, because there is no wrong way to recover. And I'll see y'all in my next one.